some higher power here, some higher wisdom at play here. It's not you taking on all of that responsibility, whereas religion pretty much just views it as all evil because hey guys what is up welcome back to my channel and hello if you're new my name is andrea johnson i'm a spiritual teacher and coach welcome to the good vibe tribe welcome to conscious coffee talks where we discuss a topic to expand our consciousness and improve our lives so with that being said let's dive into today's topic today's topic guys is over a question i get asked so many times and that is why new age is considered demonic or evil per se, or even why sometimes people who were spiritual will then turn to religion. So I want to dive deep into why this happens, why it can be considered demonic, why some people actually turn to religion after they experience spirituality. Let's shine some light on this concept. Let's first discuss the difference between religion and spirituality. So religion and the one that I'm mainly talking about is Christianity because that's the mainly where the questions are stemming from. People turning Christian after being spiritual or new age, however you want to call it. I'm going to use that term interchangeably. Religion actually provides a structure. It provides just like a straight shot how to reach I don't want to say enlightenment because that's not really a Christian term, but how to reach heaven, how to reach God per se. And it provides a straight shot. And how they do this is they just say Jesus Christ is the way. So when they do this, when you pretty much just follow that one train of thought, right? It just automatically takes you there, basically shuts you off from those lower level frequencies where this is where the difference is between religion and spirituality or new age, new age actually just like opens you up to everything. And this is where people will consider it demonic is because it opens you up to those lower level frequencies. Now, this is not a bad thing. Whereas religion will teach you that it is bad because they're going to actually tell you these darker energies or these dark aspects of yourself essentially are demonic or they're bad or it's darkness or whatever. Whereas if you're spiritual and if you are knowledgeable enough, meaning thinking the highest perception shift in spirituality, you understand that these darker aspects of yourself are you. They're not anything um, separate from you. They are not bad. They're neither good nor evil. They just are. All energy is, is just energy. You are the thing assigning logic to what an energy feels like for you, right? You are the creator of that. So when we feel these lower level frequencies, which religion will tell you are demons or whatever like that, they're just showing you unconscious aspects about yourself. They're showing you something in your life is out of alignment with God or love, right? Because darkness cannot exist where light exists, even though it is ultimately an illusion that it exists, which I'll kind of get into that a little bit later. The reason being that a lot of people turn from spirituality to religion is because it shuts off those lower level frequencies. They automatically label it as bad. And essentially that's where people will say that it opened them up to demons or to mischievous spirits or whatever like that when ultimately they were in control of it. It was these unconscious aspects of their mind that they were experiencing. So you can shut these things off at any point in time. And also spirituality will teach you as well too that you are the creator, right? You are the creator meaning you are the universe having a human experience and therefore people will go mad with that concept because they ultimately know that they are creating their lives and so they will go down rabbit hole after rabbit hole after rabbit hole trying to um, basically figure out their mind and it can drive you mad and once again open you up to these lower level frequencies which you can feel like are overtaking your life and it can get that way sometimes. But like I said before, ultimately you are in control of it because you have those higher level perception shifts. You can know where you're straying from God or from light or love and you make the shifts to come back to it. 
So some of the people that go through spirituality and they label it as bad or they switch to religion, they probably did not enjoy taking the responsibility of making those perception shifts. They probably got on the mental train of, oh my gosh, like, you know, Jesus is the way, it's the only way. Um, which that's not a bad thing either. And this is where a lot of people make the switch to religion because spirituality makes you take responsibility for your life. Not to say that religion won't in a certain way, but when you're shining light on these darker aspects of yourself, it's only up to you to change it. Now, people take that responsibility a little too far, like I said before, because they understand that they are the creator. It can drive them mad and it can create resistance because you're putting so much focus on trying to heal this aspect or you're taking on all the responsibility which you do not have to do that. We have to acknowledge guys that we are having a human experience, right? We are the universe. We are a spiritual being having a human experience. There is an aspect of limitation that comes with that, meaning this body. This body does provide a sense of limitation to our spirit, the energy that is powering this body. So we understand as well too, with the human experience, it does come with these lower level frequencies. It is impossible to avoid it. Not one human avoids lower level frequencies because it is part of the experience for a reason. So if you know these things, you know that ultimately you don't have to do it by yourself and you can use certain tools and mindset shifts to bring yourself back to God. And these are the things that I like to call surrender or let go and let God. And these are things that are going to actually allow you to free yourself from the resistance that you feel of having responsibility to heal your life. You can understand that there is a greater aspect of you, your higher self, you know, something of a greater wisdom that you are connected to that ultimately has your highest benevolence at interest. It wants what's best for you. So when you can let go and let God is what I call it, you're basically freeing yourself of these thoughts and allowing the love in allowing God in to the body, into your life, and then showing you life through that perception. So showing you life or whatever it is you're viewing as negative or lower level frequency, you then see it through the eyes of love or the eyes of God. And you will be better connected to your soul to make clear decisions, to make decisions out of love since you then feel that frequency with you or guided decisions, more listening to your intuition to then create the reality that you would like. Ultimately, it is all you, but that is a tool in which you can use because like I said, there is a human aspect of us that we do not need to do this all alone. We don't need to take responsibility. We don't need to put all the responsibility on us, even though it is our responsibility to change. We can walk with the universe and do it together as a team. So whereas religion will basically give you that structure of just Jesus is the way, this is the only way, but the thing that happens with this guys is when we feel those lower level frequencies, when you go the more religious route, even though it's a straight shot and provides structure, you will still see these lower level frequencies as separate from you when that is an illusion because everything is God, right? All energy is God, the light and the dark, it's God. So it is an illusion that this thing is separate from you, which then it means that this thing can have power over you. So you're going to fear it. So these lower level frequencies that you feel that you might think of demons or things like that, you give them power because they you view it as separation and that is the illusion. So you're thinking that these things are happening to you or that a demon is taking over your body or things of that nature when it is ultimately you are in control of it, right? So there's like a catch 22 here guys of like having too much power or thinking that you are the universe and taking responsibility can drive somebody mad. Whereas viewing these energies as separate from yourself, you can view it as the victim mindset of being fearful and not being able to do anything about it. So it is the balance of the two of where I like to call spiritual, right? Being spiritual is understanding that you are the creator 
that you walk along with the creator as well too and understand that you do have some limitation as a human and when you feel that limitation when you feel those lower level frequencies you self accept them and you identify you know that hey they are there and that is okay they are not me but it is my responsibility to transmute those. And if you need help transmuting those, you give it to God. You ask for help. We, it's like still praying. Just because that you are spiritual does not mean you don't acknowledge that there is some higher power here, some higher wisdom at play here. It's not you taking on all of that responsibility, whereas religion pretty much just views it as all evil because you're thinking you're God, because that you open yourselves up to demonic things when really it's not demonic things, they're just lower level frequencies of your mind in which you are exploring. And when you explore these things and shine light on that darkness and understand it's there to actually help you and put you back into alignment with love, it can then create a powerful reality for you. When you understand that darkness is just a compass guiding you back to the light, it's nothing to fear and it is a part of you. Every bit of it is just as much you as you are of the light then you can make your pain your power. You can live the life of your dreams. But when it all boils down to it, guys, one path isn't the way. You know, everybody's gonna be different and how they find God. And you know, I made a video over religion versus spirituality and where I found my truth. But ultimately, if somebody wants to find God through the Bible, they'll find it there. If somebody wants to find God through the, the channelings of a preacher, you know, in church, they'll find it there. If somebody wants to find God in meditation, they'll find it there. You know what I mean? Not one way is the wrong way. And ultimately, you know that same light that is powering this body is also powering another person's body as well too. And they have their own relationship with that light consciously or unconsciously, but you have to trust that that light knows what it's doing and it knows what that individual needs to see love in their life, to actually have the re-rejoining of God. And that's going to look totally different for everybody. You know, the re-rejoining of God does not necessarily have to mean full-on spiritual enlightenment of actually meeting face-to-face -face with the creator through a physical, mental, like body, mind, spirit experience. Doesn't have to be that extreme like a kundalini awakening. It can be just going to church and feeling love. It can be just like giving to other people and feeling love and joy and doing that. It can be just painting artistically and executing your passions here in this world. However, which way the individual needs to find that life force energy to live a beautiful, fulfilled, purposeful life here on earth and help improve the lives of others and whoever they touch or come into contact with to better the lives here and therefore human evolution and consciousness, it's not wrong. We have got to stop telling ourselves that things are good or bad. It just is. And we need to focus on our improving ourselves and seeing love in our own life. And therefore, when we do that, we're going to see love in our external world through everybody, through all the incidences. We're going to find love in this situation and we have to focus on that and helping bring other people up so then they can then find the love in their life and when they see it in the external world too they impact other people as well this is how we're going to change our planet this is how we're going to evolve as a human collective consciousness and make strides to living more of a life in alignment with freedom with love with spirit to help our race and our planet right? We have got to do this together. One person cannot do it alone. No matter what anybody thinks, we have to come together to raise our collective consciousness to see love in our lives and dissipate fear. And the more that you can hold this state of love and wisdom and God, essentially, the longer we can do that, then the more people that we can do that with, then we will see it manifest here physically in the physical reality 
of our 3D Earth, meaning we're gonna see our laws change, we're gonna see advances in technology, we're gonna see less wars, we're gonna see world hunger dissipate once we can get enough people to hold that frequency because we create together too. Hopefully this shines some light on spirituality and religion, you know, why it's not really, you know, demonic. It's only really what you assign it to be and the higher the perception shifts, the more wisdom that comes in, the higher the frequency, the more opportunities you can make for it to improve your life. But like I said before, it's neither right nor wrong. It just is. Somebody's, if somebody's path is new age, let it be. If somebody's path is religion, let it be. It's improving their lives and they're doing it for a reason. And if that ever changes one day, the soul knows what it's doing. Sending you all of my light and all of my love. Cheers. Thank you.